Let's bring up our fourth and final impact company in this segment, uh, Rotblock and CEO Ken Carhart. While he comes up, Rotblock are the creators of sustainable post wrap for wood trellis systems and ranch fest fencing. It'll lengthen the post life while preventing ground line rot. Is Ken here? There he is. Hi, Ken. Sorry. Excellent stealth mode. I liked Pardon? it. I liked yeah. the stealth mode. <laughs> I'm sorry. I didn't hear you from back there. <clears throat> Are we ready to go? Yes. All righty. My name is Ken Carhart. I'm the owner of Rotblock LLC. I run the business with my wife, Jessica, and my chief engineer, who all, about, all of which are out here somewhere. On behalf of all of us, we'd like to thank you for being here. It's a great opportunity for us to uh, tell our story. Um, <clears throat> Rotblock is a barrier system that's designed to maximize the service life of any post or pole that's put into the ground. <clears throat> um, there are nearly well, there's somewhere between 100 million and 150 million poles put in the ground every year. Why is this important? Well, <laughs> if, if we can uh, maximize the service life of these poles, we can basically maximize our economic and natural resource throughout the world, essentially. Um, we, th we think big in what we're doing. Um, so ground line rot is a big problem for pole, pole service life. It's, it's basically the critical weakness. Um, as seen here, um, that that area around the pole is obviously deteriorated. The picture on the right is is uh, a rot block protected pole. Um, <clears throat> it's rot block is really not about the the, the pole itself. It's more about the systems. Um, the systems uh, that uh, that are supported by the pole are are worth a ton of money in terms of what they support in terms of the trellis system and in some cases the fruit or the, the hops or electricity in, in case of utility. So um, at the end of the day, um, protecting that pole can translate into hundreds of millions of dollars uh, to growers or electric, electrical companies and, and whatnot. Leaching is a, is a problem that's become more more of a critical, well, it's become uh, a catalyst to business in, in our case um, in terms of uh, consumer awareness. There's, in the utility industry, they're becoming more aware of, of uh, chemical leaching uh, coming out into the soils and certainly in our commercial growing community. Um, it's becoming a hot topic because the plants are actually taking up those chemicals into the fruit. These are our three agricultural wood products. Um, we have, we make a, here in Bend, we make a 13 and a half inch, a 20 inch, and a 30 inch product. Um, these products uh, are being shipped primarily to Washington State. Um, most, probably 90% of our business at this point is in, in Yakima Valley. Um, but we do ship to Willamette Valley, we ship to, we've shipped product to Italy and Sweden, Australia, Canada. Uh, in fact, I just got an order sitting in the stool in the back there for two pallets going up to Yakima. So um, uh, these, these products are, are uh, primarily going into uh, hop yards, um, high density orchards, and we're moving into the vineyard, vineyard business as well. Our product's fully patented, um, which is uh, nice long term. And uh, we, we uh, have relationship and support letters from Oregon State University. I worked with them on the products development from the beginning. I know Jeff Morrell personally, and we've spent a fair amount of time together over the years. <clears throat> These are our, of course you see, um, the first slide would be uh, commercial agriculture. Um, that's, we're already, Pretty, pretty well cemented in that industry and, and sort of changing the game within commercial agriculture. No one used these products pr prior to us. And so we kind of changed the mindset as, uh, as time's gone along. 
So um, obviously the, the consumer at the consumer level, they're seeing the benefits of, of what we're doing. Um, to date, we're probably servicing upwards of 600,000 poles, uh, protecting them against ground line rot and chemical leaching into the soils. Um, the reason why we're here today is to, um, we've already developed on the R&D work on our new utility product. Um, it's a thicker, more durable product. It's gonna go into the utility industry, um, but it needs say, uh, marketing and sales dollars to, to launch. Um, and then we're also developing, we've proven a prototype for our square product for the dimensional markets. Um, so we're actually gonna form our current production into a square and kick one of those out every second. And um, that's the plan. So we've got, uh, we need to develop the ancillary equipment to, uh, to do that, as well as packaging, because that product will, you might see at Home Depot or uh, some of the lumber yards around town. <clears throat> uh, in commercial ag, these basically, um, you know, doubling the service life uh, has a profound impact and value to all three of these target markets, commercial, utility, and dimensional lumber. Um, there's, there's tremendous cost involved with building these trellises um, and fencing structures, um, as well as, of course, uh, in the utility side. Utility pole installation is $15,000, so if we can even get them 10, 10 more years of service out of a utility pole, that's huge in terms of dollars amounts. Um, it might be surprising to find out that, that we would be less than $25 per utility pole to, to add rot block to that utility pole. Um, there are other systems within that, that industry in particular that cost between $150 and $400. Um, so our, our goal is to be pervasively used uh, and not have our price point be a factor in, in the use. So we were always targeting a raw material supply that was uh, cost effective and, and uh, readily available. That turned out to be <coughs> uh, recycled materials. Um, uh, rot block is made from 100% recycled uh, product. Um, our, uh, we, we, we feel strongly about our social and, and environmental responsibility. Uh, our plant is a zero waste facility. Um, we are lead manufacturing based. Um, basically nothing goes to waste. Uh, when we begin or end a production run, that goes back into our, back gets ground up and put right back into the system. Um, I'll let you guys read the bullet points there. They're pretty self-explanatory, but we're pretty passionate about um, our love for the environment and taking care of our people. <clears throat> our business model is pretty, pretty straightforward. Uh, for the most part, we've had success going, reaching out to folks directly. Um, and so we've kind of uh, continued that pattern throughout. Um, but as we've gone, gone on here, uh, we just recently picked up our fourth distributor and we have our f a fifth one coming on board here in the next month or so. But it's basically pretty average. Um, sort of thing. Our profit margins are very, very good. Um, cost of goods is less than seven cents and our usual sale price is around $1.10. So we're, we're doing pretty well on that, on that front. Um, and raw material costs are stable. So um, overall, we've got a good plan in place um, and uh, we're looking forward to, to expanding that with um, being able to scale our business with, with these funds. We're doing business with some of the major business, major um, commercial farms in America, let alone the world. Um, some of our farms are 6,000 continuous acres. Um, they are uh, using, for example, that particular farm uses 110 poles per acre. Um, so it's a lot of poles overall. Uh, we're doing business with Anheuser-Busch, Roy Farms, Carpenter Ranches, which is a seven generation old farm. Um, some of the big names in, in uh, agriculture. Uh, we started a recycling program recently. Uh, so we're taking the farmer's drip tubing and uh, bringing that back and grinding it up and 
turning it into rot block and then back out to the farm. It's a pretty nice, nice little circle. We're not very efficient at that yet, but it's working. The product you see there is made from recycled drip tubing. We started a relationship with uh, uh, David Schmidt out in Wallawa at Integrated Biomass Resources, and uh, um, they're, they're actually putting rot block, rot block on poles directly at the, at the plant to service customers like Anheuser-Busch, who doesn't want to mess with the installation pro product uh, or process of rot block at their farm um, because of lack of or more migrant help. They don't have the education, I guess, and time to train people um, because it's temporary. Our sales model is pretty good. Um, overall, we're, we're looking at uh, uh, 21 to 21 or 2021 at $14 million with three products combined. Uh, we are 1% for the planet members and uh, we are certified for organic use uh, through WSDA. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you, Ken. And Rotblock, which of our panelists is going to kick us off on this final, <clears throat> final company we're going to talk about today at Impact? Awesome traction, Ken, and it's a product that really serves a real need. It's obvious, so um, thank, congrats on your work. Um, thank you. There's a lot of different ways you described your impact. How would you describe the, the main impact that your company's having on the world or the environment? Uh, well, it's having a profound impact on our local community. We've, we've repurposed nearly, or over at this point, 300,000 pounds of plastic into the making of Rotblock. Um, we've taken about 10,000 pounds of drip tubing from, from our farms uh, that we work with. Um, so yeah, on that front, it's been, been very good. Uh, my wife and I's uh, whole premise for starting this company was kind of to do something that mattered. So mm. we're, we're, we feel like we're on our way to doing that. That's great. And for your customers, if they weren't using rot block, what would they be doing? Is it just nothing? So are you competing with the absence of this product, or is there a real co competitor th uh, that you're competing against? Um, there's a, in our region or our neck of the woods, yeah, they'd be doing nothing. We've kind of changed the, changed the game in that industry and plan on doing the same thing in the utility industry as well as uh, dimensional lumber. Uh, there really hasn't been a, a product that's um, cost effective and our product is, is very much geared that way on every, from beginning to end, we're, we have that mindset of uh, making it cost effective, not, uh, not getting that price point out of, out of touch with reality, so. Uh, so one question, do you use the rot block in addition to pressure treating or the existing stuff or yeah. in replacement of? Can be, well, it can be in replacement of or in conjunction with uh, it's, it, it was developed uh, with, when I worked with Jeff Morell, it was developed in conjunction with a treated wood or uh, rot resistant species. So it could be a western red cedar or juniper or uh, those kinds of things. Um, but later on, there was additional research that came out of um, Canada actually that proved that barrier systems were effective even on untreated pine, which, you know, the service life increase was about 50%. But, um, but yeah, it can be used on, on any, one. any so, product. So your next major market that you're trying to go after is the utility pole market. That's right. Like. So yes. what's the critical issue to make it successful in the utility pole market? Um, well, we already have, we've, we've actually met with the city of Seattle, uh, Seattle City Light, um, and had really positive feedback since the product was actually finished, which was, was just recently, we, we haven't really had a whole lot of time um, to do it. So part of these funds would be to, to get out there and, and promote it. Um, there is some bureaucracy within the utility industry um, so that it's a little, you know, there's, it's not, um, uh, you know, it's not going to be a smooth sailing all the way, but there is, we've, we've gotten positive feedback. In fact, um, I, th I believe it was Sa Seattle City Light said they would buy it at 30 inches, which was our a limiting factor early on. We didn't have that width so, of product, but now we do. So 
It's a, uh, we've just kind of been working towards in the manuf first building our plant, then sort of getting it right, and then adding different products to it. So if you get funding, what's the next person you're going to add to your team? Um, well, that will be truly up to the, on the sales end. I, I will probably be converting more of my energy towards uh, the utility side. Um, we, ideally, I'd like to find a utility products distribu distribution company. Um, we had one kind of that was in the, in the works, and then it's just kind of stalled out. I'm not sure where they're at. I think ultimately they're kind of intimidated by, by, that, um, by that idea. So they're not, this particular company isn't, doesn't have a barrier system in their repertoire, which is good and bad because they don't really know how to uh, present it to their customers. So, um, yeah. I have one, and then I think we'll toss it over to the audience. Um, behavior change, no matter what people are selling, it's, it's just such a challenge. How do you address changing the behavior of adding something before installing, uh, you know, your product to any of the polls? Um, well, ultimately, it's, it's our accolades that kind of help to sell what we're doing. Um, we, in terms of you know, various system research, we have, we have that, and we have support letters from Oregon State University. So the, it's not, I've talked to thousands of growers, and ultimately, every one of them knows where their poll is going to fail. Everyone. And, um, and so it's not a, it's not about, um, it's typically about where do they fit the installation of Rotblock into their system. So if they're going out there and they have a set time schedule where they're throwing poles in the ground every, you know, 10 seconds, um, you know, where, where does Rotblock get put onto that pole? And so we work closely with our growers, especially at the beginning early on. Now they're kind of getting, you know, they're sort of into a groove of doing it. We have lots of repeat business. Um, like I said, I just got an order backstage while I was sitting there. Um, so it's, it, uh, uh, you know, it's just a matter of kind of changing the mindset, which takes a little time. Okay. Let's go to the, sorry, let's go to the audience and get the boxes going. Hi. Hi. Thank you. So is there a plan for after the extended lifespan of the poll? Is there a program for your customers to say receive it back to you and re-recycle it? Or is it really just a one-time use product? No, actually, uh, we've taught, you know, it hasn't been enough time to implement some of these ideas, but, um, but we've talked about having a, a, a station um, in, for example, Yakima that people could bring their, their rot block at the end of its life to, to that station. Um, rot block is very durable, so it's, it, um, it actually, in fact, it can be reused, um, and we encourage reuse because that's kind of what we're all about anyway. So, um, so yeah, it, it, it's, it's, that's been um, a consideration as we've kind of moved along here. The other one is that we, ideally, we'd like to, as we expand into other markets, say, Italy. Um, you know, we would love to open up a manufacturing facility in Italy and, and use the recycled content from that region to make Rotblock and do this, repeat the same pattern. So I just recently installed a bunch of uh, post fencing for horses, so I, and, and just doing the math, um, the added cost would have been pretty minimal, so I, I, it's yeah. definitely an interesting idea because uh, the cost of adding, of putting in like steel fencing is dramatically higher. Uh, but my question is, uh, most of what I did I set in concrete. So how, would, how does that uh, affect, improve the longevity or how is it effective or not effective if used in conjunction with concrete? Um, so, and, and, and also, do you have an idea, is there been enough research on the, how much the longevity improves since you probably haven't had 15 years to see if it rots. Okay, uh, concrete is a stabilizer, so and it's not a barrier system, which means it's porous. It, it allows microorganisms to pass through it. So using rot block in conjunction with concrete 
um, is good and, and will help your pole last um, up to twice as long. Um, it's, it's a night and day difference because the pole is simply not subjected to the decay pressure that it would be if you just put it into the ground. Um, so you can take a pole out 10 years from now and it'll basically look like brand, a brand new pole because it's simply not abused. Um, your other question was, uh, Uh, well, Brot Block came from science. It came from research papers. Um, I, I spent 12 years in the agricultural wood products industry, and um, I got tired of telling my customers that the only thing they could do was treat their poles with stronger, harsher chemicals. And so um, uh, I started doing research and ultimately ended up at old colleagues, uh, basically, I, I graduated from landscape architecture from the University of Oregon, and then ended up at Oregon State University for um, for my uh, research on on wood science. And so, you know, it's that that research has started probably 70 years ago, and it started from the utility industry itself. They dumped bunch, bunches of money into into that research. And Jeff Morell has been, been with that program for 35 years, so he's, he's been around it quite a bit, and we have support letters from Jeff. Uh, 